the speed and the amount of people just um, bring new challenges with them. And I think one important point is that we need to have an honest discussion with the people on the ground. Yes, we can manage that, but there will be challenges. If you see the Central American children as migrants, well, it's very, very easy just to deport them, throw them out, and what, what the hell? Who cares? But if you see them as people fleeing a war-like situation in Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador, then you can't throw them out. So what the Americans have done is to have pressured the Mexican government into having us do the deportations, because since we have no rule of law in Mexico, we don't have to give them a hearing. It's very political, and it's very much an issue of public debate as well, because one of the, well, as Ali said earlier, our public opinion seems to start shifting, and security and terrorism, of course, is one part of the public fear, let me put it that way. And it's very important that we have a political response on that. And I think to this point, we do have a political response to that. But with the numbers continuing as high as they have been, and people, um, part of people crossing the border unregistered, of course, that is an issue. We are, of course, doing the two things together, trying to um, um, integrate as much as possible, not as much as possible, integrate the people that we have here and uh, um, our, our brothers coming from West Africa, but also, um, of course, controlling our borders. You have to make people to integrate people, we cannot get, uh, put them in ghettos because this is the recipe for the problems that we have, we see today in Europe. Our feeling is that you need to bring the people in touch with the people coming in, so to speak. And that goes exactly. close to what you said earlier. And there's different ways to do that, but it's difficult to do that with the large number of people coming in, A, and B, the growing number of people being very skeptic about what's happening and having their own personal fears. And they might not be very right-wing, but they might just see, I'm unemployed, what's going to happen to my chances to get a job if there's a million people coming in? If the Germans and the Europeans and the Americans and now the Russians, like yesterday, can find a long-term solution to the Syrian crisis, that is going to be a whole of a lot less costly from every point of view than having millions and millions of Syrians eventually empty the country and all go to Germany. And the same is true for Mexico and Central America. The problem is it's, again, very difficult to convince American taxpayers or German taxpayers uh, to pay for things happening elsewhere when they feel that there are a lot of problems at home. And that takes a lot of courage on the part of leaders. I'm not going to uh, stop the migration flow anytime soon, anywhere in the world. This is a, a, a reality that we have to uh, um, deal with, and we will have to deal with, and all governments in the world will have to uh, deal with in the future. So we better be pre prepared. Uh, technology is global, but innovation is very local. So, uh, in a sense, the innovation is going to come from the ground. It's going to come from the small farmer. Uh, so, the, the idea is that to empower the small farmer from the beginning, and this is what we're trying to do at, at OCP in terms of fertilizer. We are not selling fertilizer in Africa the same way we're doing it in the rest of the world. We start by mapping soil fertility using high tech, then we do soil testing with the farmer to, to make sure we give them the right type of fertilizer at the right time for the right type of soil. You need to have the, the financial institutions on the ground. In Brazil, you have, uh, well, mainly uh, Banco do Brasil, but you have other banks who are there. And they, and they have the experience, and, and, and uh, they also help with the dissemination of innovation, and, and they, they adjust as new technologies come. So I, th I think to have this institutional infrastructure, you be uh, absolutely uh, necessary because it's the way also to give the instruments for the, the small farmers. We need to put our resources together. We need to put our sovereignties together to build like regional policies or continental policies. When a, a, a rural farmer in Niger does a good job in producing and then he has no way of selling his production. Or if they try to send their production to the you know, countries that have a seaport, and then you have to go through 10 or 15 you know, uh, control checkpoints, people trying to get money out of your, you know, your trucks, and then you end up being completely 
you know, broke or, and we have, we do have uh, uh, regional policies in regional economic communities, but people do not apply them at the local level or in, in our roads and everything. So my thing is we have to integrate our agriculture. The first sovereignty of a nation is to be able to feed your people. Food security is a major act of sovereignty. Why is subsidy a dirty word? Because economists think that we have a, a functioning market and subsidies come in and distort the market. So it's not good. But the, 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 the agricultural market in, in Africa is a history of market failures. We have market failure. We have to build the market before deciding that subsidies are a dirty word. The commercial farmer who will bring heavy equipment and uh, do damage, uh, not only to the, um, to the soil, but do damage to uh, uh, water and environment and biodiversity. But particularly, the amount of employment that they generate is minimal compared with the amount of employment that the small and uh, uh, medium-sized farmers generate. United, we are strong. Africa can only have a great destiny, a great future. Africa can only feed the world. If you think Africa as a continent with a global strategy, We are working, working hand in hand and with the president on talks about free trade with Mexico, Colombia. We actually have told the European Community uh, Union that we are ready to present our offer, Mercosur offer, including Argentina, by November. Investment has been the real vector of integration in Latin America, more than trade. Uh, Brazil is a country that's very open investment. We've been one of the major uh, destinations for foreign direct investment. The discussion about uh, transfer prices has become much more clear and I would say more favorable to countries like Brazil. So that also facilitates uh, we to get more involved in global value changes. These are the trade-offs. Do I, do I use my water for hydraulic fracturing for energy, for energy security for the country, or I use it for food production, or I use it for a growing urban po population? Those are in conflict, but they need, we need to move from that conflict zone to a zone of a green zone where we start talking about these d discussions and make collective decisions about the, the, the future. In our negotiations, for example, in China, the thing was, well, we'll send you in each country 200, 300 workers. I said, no, what we're going to need is uh, a manager and a quality control manager, where we train 30 young people every three months. Then as soon as they're done, we give them the job available. In two years, we've hired 5,200 young people are working across the continent, helping us to electrify it with solar. Why solar? Because that's, uh, again, it's here. We're not going to run out of sun solar. It's cheap, it's, it's cheap. sustainable. You do have Atlantic energy hubs, and you've seen a shift in trade patterns, but they're extremely fluid, they're extremely dynamic, and I think for that very reason, I don't think such a system exists. The plan that has been done is first for our needs, but we have been also working with European countries, with Spain, with France and others, to uh, work on the integration, more integration and interconnection, because Morocco can be in the future a supplier to Europe to meet their uh, European Union directive of 20% of noble energy by 2020. The European utility industry is completely fragmented and that um, it's not a unified market. Uh, you have Spanish utilities and French utilities and German and the Russians and everybody's slugging it out. And so it's not an efficient, transparent market. A lot of these problems would go away if there was just a, a unified market. 
what we need to be doing is building regional markets to absorb what we produce. Um, we've seen that with the West Africa gas pipeline, the Mozambique South Africa pipeline, but there's still a greater deal for regional integration, which would also reduce our vulnerability to external shocks. Stability of incentives and bringing the private sector into all forms of energy, the big ball game of oil and gas to the solar um, small solutions is fundamental. We have to have stability of institutions, stability of incentives, good regulation. This is key. Where there are lots of programs that exist for micro-enterprises, lots of large corporate financing, but that missing middle, that sort of small grain business, the engines of growth as we like to call them, there's a lot of capital that's not going into them because nobody's really helping them interpret the risk. There's a lot of talent development that's required. People need to roll up their sleeves. And the local um, investors are not looking at them because they see it as a risk, just like the outside. If you have money, uh, only foreign money coming in, of course, when they make their returns, they're going to take it out. If we want money to remain in the, in the country, we have to invest our own money. We need to change the way, uh, the types of investments away from credit into equity and build an equity culture. The equity culture will then build, will then require uh, local parties. Remember I was saying that we need to have local partners for investors to work with. That gives the local party an incentive to have an alignment of interests with the investing partner. There is the development of green finance, uh, capitalized on uh, carbon capital that the, that the continent is very rich of to compensate the, the challenge that for the moment most of on climate change issues, most of the capital goes rather than to mitigation than adaptation. And therefore, we need to leverage and, and take these opportunities of uh, uh, taking forward this green finance that, is, that will be definitely very favorable uh, to the continent. Africa needs to find a way to identify transferable skills so that they can, pro so that they can provide the right type of development for people to assume jobs that they may not have been uh, educated in. So transferable skills to develop a workforce that is ready, uh, I think, is, 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 is critically important. One aspect of political will is regional integration. It has been discussed earlier. Okay. Today, being a Togolese South African or Senegalese shouldn't make a difference, because that is the case in Europe, that is the case in Asia, it should be the case in Africa as well. We should be able to move from one country to another, work in one country or another, learn from each other. And, this, and one other thing, when it, uh, talking about political will again, the role of the diaspora. How do we make sure that we bring back those people, those with, who have the necessary and the right skill sets, back in the continent? Youth at risk means society at risk. If you have 300,000, 400,000 in different states, young people who are not employed and they become desperate, then they are at risk. And they're not just going to be, a, it's not going to be a youth problem, it's going to be a national security problem, an international security problem, a healthcare problem. You're going to have a lot of issues. Young people need to be placed at the center of development decisions and national policy decisions. Um, my first point is about really representation and not uh, lowering the quality of the debate, but simplifying the access of the people to this, to this speech uh, and really starting representing the hope and uh, having people identify to good leaders uh, in our countries. My second point is about women, women leadership. Um, so up until I, I dared to apply to this program, I thought that leadership was reserved the male, white, dominant, charismatic people of this world. Uh, and when we started doing our simulations a few days ago with the emerging leaders, we realized that empathy, humanity, vulnerability are very important in solving global issues while taking into account the people behind these very vague concepts that we're, that we're manipulating. 